If you're a big fan of SpaceX and, more importantly, Elon Musk, then you probably have heard of his catchphrase, Manufacturing is underrated and design is overrated. According to Musk, designing a rocket is trivial. There are tons of books. You read them, you understand equations, you design a rocket. The design is not hard. The making of it is hard. The making of a production line that builds and launches many is extremely hard. And the next level beyond that would be creating a fully reusable system and having that in volume production and launch. That's super, super hard. He emphasized that developing a production system is 10 to 100 times harder than designing the product which proved especially true with Raptor. For initial test flights, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor engines to power the super heavy first stage and six on the Starship upper stages. So for each test flight that either ends in the ocean with a fiery landing or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company will lose 39 Raptor engines. That is a staggering amount of engines, both in terms of cost and lost production time. By comparison, NASA provided Aerojet Rocketdyne with $1 billion a few years ago to restart the production of Space Shuttle main engines. Four of these will power each Space Launch System rocket. Each individual engine, on top of the startup fee NASA paid, will cost an additional $100 million. For all of this money, NASA will get a maximum production of four engines a year. Engines that are not reusable and largely based on technology that is decades old. Blue Origin's BE-4 engines also fell into a similar situation. This engine has been in development for more than a decade, but has never made a test flight with any prototypes. The production of this engine is still extremely sluggish. Up to now, Blue Origin has delayed delivery for ULA for up to five years. It's reasonable to expect that SpaceX will need about 10 test flights of Starship to get the vehicle into working order and start reusing the rockets. Therefore, if SpaceX is to conduct 10 test flights of Starship in the next year, it will need something like 300 Raptor engines, which are not much smaller than the Space Shuttle main engines. That is why, when Musk found production issues were more severe than he realized, he sent the now infamous Black Friday email to employees last November. Musk has always been so busy with the hard engineering challenges of everything that's involved with the Lex Friedman mentioned issues related to rockets in a conversation last year, which he was very excited to share. At that time, he said that engine production is the biggest thing absorbing his time, because it is really hard to manufacture at scale. And why is this? Well, as Musk said, uh, It's very complex. A lot of what complexity means here is a lot of components involved. There's a lot of a lot of components and a lot of uh, unique materials. Musk and his team had to invent several alloys that don't exist in order to make this engine work. In full flow staged combustion, there are many feedback loops in the system, including the propellant, hot gas flowing simultaneously to so many different places on the engine, and they all have a recursive effect on each other. Thus, changing one thing has a recursive effect here means changing something that's quite hard to control. That's why no one's made this before. Moreover, the use of methane also creates a bunch of difficulties for SpaceX. The finance side of things is also one of the biggest barriers to the progress of production. For example, Musk stated that designing a closed cycle engine is easy. However, the extremely hard part is getting the cost per ton of thrust under $1,000. With each Raptor producing 230 tons of thrust, this means that each engine must cost less than 230,000 to produce. Musk continued by stating that the cost per ton to orbit and the cost per ton to the surface of Mars is several orders of magnitude too high on current launch vehicles. For this reason, it is so important to move as much mass and complexity as possible to the ground systems, which Musk is calling Stage Zero. For example, SpaceX has opted to not fuel Starship through the booster, and will rather move the complexity and mass to the ground and fuel Starship from its side. Musk himself has heard the alarm for a potential bankruptcy of his space exploration firm SpaceX due to a major Raptor production crisis last year. However, the deep reason is the problem of cash flow. Raptor production directly affects two unprecedented large tech space projects being carried out simultaneously by SpaceX. Each will cost billions of dollars, which, conservatively speaking, may be $5 billion each and likely significantly more, to bring to fruition and provide some return on investment. 
And ultimately, the success of SpaceX hinges on both projects as they are each to some extent dependent upon the other. Musk also clarified it in a tweet days later. If a severe global recession were to dry up capital availability slash liquidity, while SpaceX was losing billions on Starlink and Starship, then bankruptcy, while still unlikely, is not impossible. Clearly, SpaceX needs to complete additional capital raises, very likely valued in the billions of dollars, to finish its Starship and Starlink projects. If confidence in the company is significantly shaken, or if there is a severe global economic crisis, such funding would be in doubt. But now, all is going pretty well at SpaceX. As you can see, all 33 Raptor 2 engines have been installed on B7, and six other engines are also being quickly installed on S24 in the high bay. SpaceX is currently reaching a capacity of up to seven engines per week, a feat that no other company has achieved yet. Notably, the production rate is still improving day by day. So, how did SpaceX manage to do such a thing? In fact, Musk has long exposed this key detail. In the 2020 Air Warfare Symposium, Musk shared that in great detail, but noted that the object of reference at that time was Starlink. He said, it is important to design for manufacturing to have a tight feedback loop between the design of the object and the manufacturing system. When you design the object at first, you don't realize all the parts that are really difficult to manufacture. So, having the design and manufacturing and bringing those up at the same time so that in the beginning, you are going to make a thing that you know is wrong, but you're figuring out what's hard to manufacture. That's the real problem. So we brought up the Starlink production line before we had the design finalized, which is actually the right thing to do. We discovered there are all these things in the design that were difficult to make, therefore we must change the design. The satellite had the same capability, but it was just very easy to make and launch. The satellites are being produced at a rate faster than we can launch them. The cost of the satellite has dropped below the cost of transporting it to orbit. The cost of the satellite will keep coming down as we ramp up rate and make design improvements. The current dizzying production rates of Starship, Raptor, and Starlink have all but confirmed that Musk's method is completely accurate. Hopefully, with the available direction, others can follow that success. And when that time comes, the space race will be more thrilling than ever. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.